whatever you say or do, let it be in the name of Jesus the Lord, glorifying God the Father. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, in the name of the one only God, Amen. I have been watching uh, YouTube, apparently not the only one, about an ex-Catholic. He says, well, I don't want to, to judge the man, as he himself says that he was talking out of love. And here again, I am talking only out of love, the love of the truth and truth in love, as St. Paul recommends to us in Ephesians 5.14. 5.14? Or is it 4.15? Yeah, I suppose it's 4.15. And then Jesus says, you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. So, uh, when you say that you were an altar boy, you have been to church, you have been to the sacraments, and you never opened the Bible. Well, this is against the prescriptions of the church. Since you seem to be a young man of our century, Let's not forget that already 50 years ago, 50 years ago, so sometime before your birth, the Vatican Council, Second Vatican Council, insisted on the Bible. Dei Verbo, that was a dogmatic constitution only about the Bible, about the Word of God. So, if you were unlucky enough to have priests or parents or, or school principals or catechists who, who wouldn't care less, although they were Catholics, about the Bible, don't accuse the church. The church invites you again and again to read the Bible. And in the Latin rite, in the Roman Catholic rite, we have four readings of, of the Bible every single Sunday. Three readings, counting the psalm, every, every day. And in the Coptic rite, you have six readings of the Bible every Sunday. You complain, I, don't, I didn't get your name, that you went to a Catholic university and there you did not learn anything about the Bible, but you, you were asked to practice transcendental meditation. Well, this is, this is a deviation. Or let's say, transcendental meditation might be all right, but without overlooking, without neglecting the Bible. The, uh, the base of our faith, the ground of our faith, is the Word of God. We believe in the Word of God. We believe in the Bible. Don't forget that the first book which was printed, it was printed by the church at the Gutenberg uh, printing press in Germany before, before uh, the birth of Protestantism with an ex-Catholic priest, Martin Luther, in the 16th century. Let's not forget that there were translations of the Bible in the vernacular languages, I mean in the local languages. In, in, English, uh, in Italian, at least eight translations. I'm talking about the time before Martin Luther. In German also, before Martin Luther. You seem to have made a great discovery by saying that you had to be born again. Well, the church says this all the time. Read John 3, 3, born again. Not just born again spiritually, in spirit. Water and spirit, water and spirit. Now, to be born again, the Greek here is anothen. Anothen means at a time. Anothen means from above, and anothen means anew. Again, newly. So, for us human beings to be born, we know more or less how, how we are born from a woman, our mothers, God bless them all. 
through our fathers, of course, God bless them all, whether they are alive or dead. So we were born from the body, from the flesh, actually, sarks. The gospel says, sarks, we have to be born of the spirit. We have to be born again by water and Holy Spirit. Now put all these things together. New birth, water, spirit, from above, this is baptism. It's infant baptism. Because Jesus says it very clearly to Nicodemus, who is born from the flesh is only flesh. So, the children of Christians who are not baptized are only born of the flesh, and they are flesh. The children of Christians who are baptized are reborn by water and the Holy Spirit. Don't forget, please, the water, otherwise you are twisting texts. Now, salvation through faith. This is an old story between Catholics and Protestants, and they arrived to an agreement already in the 70s, in the 80s. Anyway, of course, salvation by faith in Jesus Christ, and not anymore in the works, especially in the external works of the Mosaic law, such as circumcision, etc. Now, but faith alone will put the texts together. Take the letter of St. James, whether you like it or not, my dear friend. I, don't ho I hope that you are not saying that the letter of St. James is a letter of straw, a straw brief, as someone said sometime in the 16th century. If you believe that the letter of James is inspired by God, then he tells you clearly, bluntly, as body without soul is dead, thus is faith without works. I shall prove to you my faith by my works. Let's read the letter to the Galatians. What is now important, it's not circumcision or uncircumcision, it is faith working through charity. It is faith working through charity. I suppose this is Galatians 5.5 uh, 5 or 6.6. 6. Let us see here. 5.5 5 or 6.6. 6. Galatians 5. No, I don't see. So, let us see if it is chapter 6. I'm sorry for the delay. But I have a problem with my, with my eyes. Anyway, please find it uh, for me uh, in the letter to the Galatians. Now, uh, something easier. First letter to the Corinthians, chapter 13, the famous hymn to the, to the charity, to love. If I had faith to transport mountains and not having love, I'm just nothing, nothing, nothing. So, we are saved by faith, but faith has works of faith, faith works in charity, energumeni the agapis, and without faith, without love, without charity, faith is nothing. You are against the dogma or the term transubstantiation. Transubstantiation, meaning the change of substance. Well, yes, the word might be philosophical, transubstantatio, substantatio. But let us come to Matthew 26, 26 and following, and parallels, and 1 Corinthians 11. Jesus takes the bread and he says, this is my body. 
And St. Paul says, if you eat and you drink without distinguishing the, uh, you, you know, anaxios, without deserving it, then you are sinning, not against the symbol, but you are sinning against the body and blood of the Lord. Just let us read John 6. My body, my body, he who eats my body, he who drinks my blood. Of course, we, we are not cannibalists, so we don't drink the blood, the blood as blood. We don't eat the flesh of Christ as flesh, but under the uh, appearances of bread and wine. The church says, read the Bible. But the church also gives us the interpretation of the Bible. The church never says, disregard the Bible. Unfortunately, this number six of yours, uh, dear brother, uh, is not accurate. Christians are infallible? No. The Pope is infallible, meaning is not a sinner? No. But we believe that the Church, when she affirms solemnly something in the name of Christ, in the name of the Bible, in the name of tradition, only concerning faith and ethics, then the Lord is with His Church, as He promised, until the end of time. And uh, Matthew uh, 28, 20, and He is he wouldn't allow the gates of hell to prevail against his church. Uh, Matthew uh, 16, 18. Well, we have the authority of Jesus. We don't have any authority above the authority of Jesus. Another thing is the sacrifice of Christ. The Mass is not, the Holy Mass is not a new sacrifice. We are not sacrificing again Christ. Although the letter to the Hebrews says that with our sins, with our mortal sins, we are crucifying again the Son of God. But here we are not producing a new sacrifice. We are only applying the sacrifice of Christ. He has told us, do this in memory of me. This is what the Catholic and Orthodox Church follow literally every Sunday, every day, where the, church, the priest says in all languages, in all rites, this on the bread, this is my body, and on the wine, this is the cup of my blood, and then he repeats the command of the Lord, do this in memory of me. You are you were uh, protesting against the Latin Mass. Well, now we have the Mass in all local languages, and sometimes people regret the Latin, because at least in Latin, you could all sing in one single voice, as let's say Greek unites all Greek Orthodox, as, uh, well, uh, Russian unites all Byzantine, uh, Slavic uh, Orthodox, as Syriac unites all Syriacs and the Maronite and, and the, the Chaldean and the Syriac Church. So this is not a big deal, uh, Latin Mass. And uh, we have, you go everywhere you go, you have an English Mass in, uh, in England, French Masses in, uh, in France, and uh, German Masses in, in Germany, and so forth. Now, the images, images, uh, even in the Old, before going to the Old Testament, in the letter to the Colossians, first chapter, verse 7, 16 and following, Jesus himself is the icon, is the picture of the unseen God. Icon to Theuto Auratu. In the Old Testament, they were afraid of, of images because there was the danger of idolatry because they were primitive people. But since the Word became flesh, John 1.14, and since Jesus himself is the icon 
the word, the Greek word is icon, icon, image of the unseen God. So we have icons, we have images, we have statues. By the way, even in the Old Testament, you have the command by God himself to Moses, to Solomon, do carved images, do images for the holy place. And I would recommend here two books. This is the faith, a complete explanation of the Catholic and probably also of the Orthodox faith by Canon Francis Ripley. And also the book of Father Ya'oub Sa'ade, a Palestinian priest born in Jaffa from the Latin Patriarchate of Jerusalem, Palestine. Uh, faith and Scripture. Faith and Scripture. Al Jawab min al Kitab. There, uh, uh, Father Ya'qub Sa'ade, as well as Canon Francis Ripley, give you all the Old Testament texts. Let's not forget that of the Book of Numbers when, when, the, when Jews were nagging against God and Moses and God sent to them snakes. And so they were, um, they were dying one after the other. And then God said to Moses, ordered Moses, well, do a snake in a metal, you know, just a sort of metal, a sort of a form of a snake, and, and put it on a high place, which represents crucified Jesus, as we read in John 3, 14 and following. So, uh, <clears throat> of course, the church says Jesus is the only way. Jesus does not, uh, the church does not say Jesus is a way and the Pope is another way. The Pope through Jesus. The Church, the Catholic or Orthodox Church never says Jesus is a way and, and the Virgin Mary is another way and the saints is the third way. All of them is through Jesus Christ. All our prayers, all our prayers uh, are uh, finished like this in the Holy Mass, Latin Rite. Per Christum Dominum Nostrum. Per Dominum Nostrum Jesus Christum. Through Christ our Lord. Through Christ our Lord. So Jesus is the only mediator among men, among God and men, because he is the only one who unites the divine nature and the human nature. Well, my dear friends, uh, I'm afraid... Uh, we have uh, now we are running short of time but uh, it is good to remember i mean it is good not just to listen without any critical look uh, to anything against the church but please then let us read not only the bible but also books which quote honestly the bible without adding anything uh, from the uh, magisterium of the church or of the patriarchs just in order to to be honest and to please our dear brothers and sisters who accept only the scripture as the only authority thank you such a